my title, Secondary Representation Stability. I'll say a few things about that. And I'll talk about how the ordered configuration space of the once punctured torus, or rather some of its homology groups, are a slightly new example of something that can happen in, with secondary representation stability that hasn't been unseen in other manifolds. So let's hope this works. OK, so what are we going to do in this talk first off? Well, we're going to start out easy, talk about ordered configuration spaces. Uh, importantly, we're going to talk about ordered configuration spaces of non-compact manifolds, or open, whatever you want to call them. And we're going to note two things. There are nice maps between ordered configuration spaces on a different number of points, uh, specifically going from the ordered configuration space on n points to the ordered configuration space on n plus 1 points on the same manifold. And there are nice symmetric group actions on these ordered configuration spaces, just by permuting the points. Uh, with this, we're going to be able to say some things about first order representation stability. And namely, uh, in this talk, mostly it'll be about how homology classes can be thought of in terms of there are new classes and old classes. And well, certain classes only matter. Everything is kind of generated from them as you add points. Uh, but this can also be said in terms of representation theory of the symmetric groups and Young diagrams. Uh, then talk a little bit about FIM plus mod, only say a few words about that. And then secondary, second order representation stability. So FIM plus mod, it's the nice category that has some kind of equivalent to some Noetherian property that allows you to make sense of second order representation stability, um, as well as keep track of the signs that happen when you take consider homology classes and taking products of different things. Uh, finally, then you know, talk about the main theorem, namely how a certain uh, homology sequence of homology classes of the ordered configuration space of the ones punctured torus, these demonstrate some form of secondary representation stability that hasn't been seen in other manifolds. So secondary representation stability is a slightly more interesting phenomenon. It's not just free. It doesn't eventually become zero. And I'll make more sense of what that means later. Uh, then I'll say a very few words about the proof, but mainly that we have some nice new theorem about the Betty numbers of the ordered configuration space of the ones punctured torus. And this is just building up on some other work from somebody else, uh, Roberto Bogaria, and he calculated the growth of the Betty numbers of the ordered configuration space of the torus. And fortunately enough, the torus, the ones punctured torus, they're relatively similar. OK. So what is ordered configuration space? So the ordered configuration space of n points on a topological space m, which we're just going to write f sub n of m, is an n tuple of points, all of which are in m, and all of the points are distinct. So right, what's important here, namely order of the points matter, and points cannot collide. And for the purpose of this talk, m is going to be as nice as you want it. Uh, it's going to be some differentiable manifold. And for us, almost everything we're going to consider is going to be some non-compact or open manifold. OK. So right, what's a nice little example? Well. If we've got the ordered configuration space of two points on R2, this is going to be homotopic to S1. And right, why is that? Well, namely, we've got two points in S1, uh, in R2. And well, we can kind of shift that because R2 is a group to one point anywhere in R2 uh, times one point that's not the origin in R2. And right, this is an R2. This is an R2. Minus the origin. And so if we think about this right, this is homotopic to a point. This is homotopic to S1. So in the end, we've got something that looks like S1. Right, so we can do this. Uh, and more importantly, a non-trivial loop in our, uh, the order of the configuration space at two points on R2 is really just one point going around the other. So if we think about this for a second, we only really need to consider this picture, fixing the point one, and having two go around it. This is turned equivalent to one going around two in the same direction, or them kind of orbiting each other as a pair. Uh, just look at them for a long enough time, you'll see that this is true. Uh, and right, for more general manifolds, something that has a little bit more topology than R2, 
really the important elements in configuration space, uh, uh, the loops in configuration space tend to either be things that are one points going around the other, or the points are going around the manifold and considering that man the manifold's topology. So right, if we have some point here, for example, this nice point in the ordered configuration space of four points on the one's punctured torus, and I'm using T naught here to designate the one punctured torus, right? Well, technically this is really some point in some eight dimensional space because the torus is two dimensional in four points, each of which has two degrees of freedom. So eight point, eight dimensions, but I can't see eight dimensions. I really can't even see three dimensions that well. So we project everything down onto the order, onto just the torus and note the points have to be distinct. So this is what some element uh, in the ordered configuration space of four points on the one's punctured torus looks like. And right, we can see, well, if we're now considering some element uh, in H2, yeah, two uh, of them are for Claire. Four no, no, points. three of them are for Claire, and this one's for Antonio Nesta. Uh, Someone's not muted right now. Manu, could you mute Jeff? So, right, some point in the order, uh, the second homology of the ordered configuration space of four points on the one's punctured torus. Well, you've got two going around one, four just going around the handle and three is just kind of chilling out, not really doing anything. And this will represent some homology class in the second homology of the order configuration space of four points on the torus. So nothing's too crazy when we consider homology classes. They're just points going around each other or points going around the manifold. Or sometimes they're just gonna be points like this third point here, just sitting here, not really doing anything. So we, as I promised earlier, right, we're gonna have some inclusion of order configuration spaces. But to have this inclusion, uh, we first need to consider an inclusion of manifolds. So if M is gonna be a non-compact D-manifold or open D-manifold, whatever you really wanna consider it, uh, there's some nice inclusion of M with a disjoint union of RD into M. And how you do this, you just kind of choose some point near infinity, you pull that point back, uh, you pull that neighborhood back near infinity. So kind of like we're seeing, we're pulling uh, this thing back from there. And then we're inserting a copy of our day. And so, right, it's kind of like pulling back your sleeve and seeing your watch face. Your sleeve's still kind of gonna be all the way there, but now you have this new kind of same dimensional thing. Uh, so what's important here? Well, namely this really isn't canonical. It depends A on what place, what infinity you're choosing. If I had two punctures on the surface, I would have to choose one of those. Uh, and similarly, I'd have to choose how far to pull it back, where to put my copy of RD, how to view that copy of RD and a whole bunch of other things. But fortunately for us, for, for us once we start considering homology, uh, this really isn't going to be that much of an issue. So. Right, I promised some map between ordered configuration spaces, and that's what we're going to get. So E is going to induce some inclusion of ordered configuration spaces, and we're going to call this map iota, and right, it's going to take the ordered configuration space on n points to the ordered configuration space on n plus one points. And so we can think about this by namely going, well, iota of x1 through xn, this is going to go to E of X1 all the way through E of Xn. And we're just gonna to choose to say the last point now corresponds to E of the origin, where this origin is that RD that we're inserting in with E. So we've now seen this is a nice way of including ordered configuration spaces into slightly bigger order configuration spaces. This map's nice, but again, still, it's not super mechanical because all of this depends on choices of E. Uh, similarly, right, I could have inserted this last point in somewhere else, uh, say between one and two, and we'd still get a nice inclusion. This would be kind of a little bit weird for us to look at, but in the end, it'd be still the same thing. So what does this do nicely? Well, it does induce a nice map on homology. Namely, we can say iota induces a map, which we're just gonna call iota star from the kth homology to, of the order configuration space on endpoints 
on this manifold M to the kth homology on the ordered configuration space of N plus one points on it. So what can we think about this? So for a second, let's just do this nice and easily and say that M is gonna be R2. Well, and K can be anything we want it to, but in this case, let's just make K one. And we're gonna consider this being two and this here being three. Well, the only really interesting homology class in the first homology of the ordered configuration space of two points on R2 is gonna be 1.1 1. 1 with two going around it, as we've seen in the previous slide. And IOTA is gonna take this class and send it to the class uh, given by, well, one still sitting there and two still going around it. And now we just have this point three sitting here as well. So it's a nice map, uh, right? We're not really gonna get all the homology classes this way in the first homology of, on the order configuration space of three points because, well, three is always gonna be sitting here. But later on, we'll see that's gonna be not too bad once we consider some action of the symmetric group. So we now have this nice inclusion on the homology and this is much better behaved. We don't really need to, need to worry too much about our choices that we made with E or IOTA because when we wiggle things around, it's not too bad. And right, so for example, uh, we had this ordered configuration space on a slightly more complex manifold, right? The ones puncture torus, we had the ordered configuration space of four points, and now we're including into the ordered configuration space of five points. So this is what IOTA is gonna do. But right, if say we now change this to IOTA star, and we had one going around two, four going around this little puncture, and three sitting here, well, Iota star would take that to still two going around one, uh, four going around uh, the genus, three sitting here, and now five is sitting here. So right, we'd go from some element of H2, F4 of the ones punctured torus to some element of H2, F5 of the ones punctured torus. And right, still sitting here, but not too bad. So now, right, we need a little bit more, right? We're still not gonna get all the homology classes we'd like this way. And right, that's because one point, namely that last point is always gonna be sitting there. But if we start to consider symmetric group actions, this doesn't really worry about us too much. So, right, we have the symmetric group is gonna act on the ordered configuration space on M. And this is just gonna be done by permuting indices. So if we think about it, this is gonna send X1 through Xn sigma, that's just gonna go to x of sigma one through x of sigma n. Nothing too crazy. Uh, and well, this is gonna be really nicely behaved with respect to homology and a bunch of other things. So if again, we say had uh, the element, uh, oops, so it's not the right pen. Uh, if, say, in homology, we were considering uh, some element of H1, F3 of R2, and say we were considering the element that was two goes around one, and three sits here, well, if we had the permutation two, three acting on this, this would send this to one still sits there, but now three is the point going around it and two is the point sitting here and showing out. And if you believe me, right, this is gonna work nice and we're gonna get all the possible things in the first homology on the order of configuration space of three points on R2 this way. As long as we really have this first generator, we can act by the symmetric group and get all of the other interesting homology classes. So this works nicely and it makes us kind of not have to worry about the labeling of points so much. Okay, so we now can say, right, uh, we're gonna now be able to consider these homology classes or the homology groups of the order of configuration space on endpoints as a representation of SN. And more importantly, right, we're gonna be able to say, okay, this is gonna be some sequence of symmetric group representations. 
we're going to be able to say fix your eye and right we'll get some maps like this so i fn fn of m and these maps right will have some nice iota star actions uh, to things like this the ordered configuration the i homology of the ordered configuration space on n plus one points on m and this will go on and on and on and right we probably should consider that there's some nice symmetric group actions here as well so we have the action of sn here the action of sn plus one and something that I'm not really going to worry about too much is there are going to be nice forgetful maps in this direction too. Namely, you just forget the last point. This sometimes is good, sometimes it's a little bit scary, but right, it turns out the symmetric groups and IOTA and this forgetful map that I'm not really talking about, well, they all play really nicely together. So especially in the IOTA direction, well, if you have the symmetric group SN, act on some i homology class on the ordered configuration space on endpoints, and then use iota on this, or iota star. This is the same thing as using iota star in the first place and acting on that copy of Sn that corresponds through one through n in Sn plus one. And this should be a plus right here. So uh, it's nice. Things play well together. And right. We kind of ask ourselves, well, what do we want? What can we say about this sequence? What's nice about it? And well, does this tell us anything about the homology classes? Does this tell us anything about the symmetric group representations? And fortunately, the answer is yes. So this is going to be the notion of first order representation stability. Uh, and this is a result of Church, Allenberg, and Farb in the orientable case. And Miller and Wilson extended this to the non orientable case. So if M is some connected non compact D manifold, uh, with D at least two. Then if you have at least uh, two, twice plus one, the number of points as the homo homological degree you're considering, then the sequence of symmetric group representation stabilizes. Well, right, what does this mean? Uh, basically, it's saying all the homology groups, once you add, start adding more and more points, uh, nothing is new. All you're adding when you're adding more points is points that are gonna sit there uh, the other points don't act on it, don't go around it anyway, and they don't go around each other, and they don't interact with the topology at all. So if we think about this nicely, well, a nice little example of this is, well, the only homology classes, right, that really matter, say if we're considering the first hom homology of the ordered configuration space on R2, well, the homology class that generates this all is going to be one with two going around it. And then once we start getting into higher classes, so say uh, one, the first homology of the order of configuration space on two points, well, again, everything is going to kind of look like one with two going around it and three sitting out, up to relabeling the points. And if we went to, so if we change this three here to a four, well, the only homology class would be now with three and four sitting around it, up to relabeling all of our points. So in general, we're just going to say that everything kind of comes from very specific classes. And what's a little bit nicer, nicer about this is, well, only these generators really matter. Uh, by adding these new points here, you don't introduce any linear relationships that might kill off homology classes that you would have hoped to be there. So there's some certain freeness. And everything is kind of nice with that. Uh, and so we can kind of think about this statement as saying, well, only these new elements, the things like right here, that don't come from IOTA, because, well, there is nothing in the first homology of the order configuration space of one point on R2. Uh, these are really the only important things that matter. Uh, everything else just kind of looks like this with more points. Uh, and so that's nice. Uh, this also does have a nice little statement in terms of represent uh, in terms of representations of the symmetric group in that uh, well if we think about the young diagrams that arise from this 
there's a very nice little rule for adding boxes to our Young diagrams. And it basically says something after, well, all your boxes are going to go at the top right and they're just going to keep on going, right? And you're going to have some nice long streak off to the right. I don't know if my video is mirrored or not. So yeah, we've got some nice picture. And well, this is a nice statement, both in terms of topology and in terms of representation theory. So, right, well, we're not done because, well, we just said first order representation stability. The title of my talk has the word second order representation stability in it. So we need more maps. And namely, we want to consider, well, what happens instead of adding one point, what happens when we add two? And maybe these two points are actually doing something with each other. These two points maybe go around each other because, well, two points is just really, if the two points are just sitting there, it's just at doing iota twice, and that's boring. So, right, we say, well, E, that map of uh, M disjoint union RD, where M was a D manifold into M. More importantly, M here is going to be non-compact. This is gonna induce more inclusions. Uh, specifically, the inclusion that we really care about is the inclusion of the ordered configuration spaces on M times the ordered uh, configuration space of two points on RD into the ordered configuration space on N plus two points on M. Uh, in general, you can kind of cross this out and make this M and make this M. And we've got some map like this. But for our purposes, those maps really don't matter to us. We're only really cons considering uh, this nice map here. And so we've got a lot of stuff going on here. And well, we want to say, uh, what does this do? So again, right, this is non-canonical. Non but what does this do to homology where things might be a little bit nicer? So let's see. So again, IOTA is going to uh, do some map on homology. Uh, and it does, induces a bunch of different maps. But the map we really care about Takes some homology, takes some element of the kth homology of the ordered configuration space on endpoints on M into the kth plus one homology of the ordered configuration space of n plus two points on M. So if we think about this in terms of this example of H1 of F2 of R2, uh, two, uh, well, iota star, iota prime star. This is going to take this class that we have one with two going around it. And this is going to get mapped to where one sits here, two goes around it. And now, well, we have three sitting here, and the fourth point is going around it. And this is going to be in the ordered configuration space, the second homology of the ordered configuration space of four points on R2. So, right, we're going up one in homology but two in the number of points. And right, that's just kind of gotten by saying, we're going to add these pairs where something is going to, where the second point is down, where the last point is down center around the second to last point. And everything else is kind of staying the same otherwise. So everything is nice. Uh, one thing here to note is, well, this map might actually induce some linear relations when you start dealing with some certain classes. Uh, specifically, uh, if you say, well, let's think about the ordered configuration space, the zeroth homology of the ordered configuration space of zero points on the ones punctured torus, well, this is just going to be something that looks like a copy of Z. Uh, and well, if we map this into the first homology of the ordered configuration space of two points uh, on the ones punctured torus, well, we're going to be saying this looks something like. Uh, the map sends this to one with two going around it. Well, it turns out that this is actually equal to the zero homology class. So sometimes this isn't such a free thing. Whereas in the case where we had just had iota prime, uh, not just iota, just iota star, well, adding a point didn't kill off anything. This can sometimes kill off things. So it's a little bit less of a free action uh, and it's a little bit more complex that way. So right, let's see again, right, how iota prime star is going to act on some homology class in a slightly more complex space. So right, let's just see iota prime. This is how we kind of consider the map of two points 
uh, of a point in uh, the ordered configuration space of four points on the one's punctured torus times the ordered configuration space of two points on R2. This is what iota would do, iota prime would do. But right, what would iota do? So iota prime would say we take uh, one going or two going around one, four going around this thing, and three sitting here. Well, again, now this is going to take this to two going around one, four going around there, and now we're going to have six going around five with three sitting there. So right, we'd go from some element of H two f four of the ones punctured torus to the third homology on the ordered configuration space of six points on the ones punctured torus. So our map right increases points by two and homo homological degree by one. So what do we do here? Well, again, right, if we think about this for a second, we're clearly not going to hit everything this way because right, only five is going around six. And well, what if we want five and six to start interacting again? Well, if you think about this, again, the symmetric group is going to kind of take care of things for us. We don't have to worry so much because once we let the symmetric group act, hopefully we get more things and we don't have to worry about five and six being this lonely pair of dancers. They sometimes will exchange partners or exchange roles here. So again, right, the symmetric group still continues to act on these ordered configuration spaces uh, by permuting the indices. Uh, and again, this induces some symmetric group representation on the homology groups. But now, right, we have a different sequence. So instead of just increasing the order number of points in our order configuration space by one and increasing the homology and keeping the homo homological degree the same, we're now going to start increasing the homological degree by one whenever we add a new point to the order configuration space. To new two points by the to the ordered configuration space. And so right, uh, what's important here is uh, that we fix i. So in the end, right, again, we're still getting a bunch of different sequences, but we want n to be the thing that varies. We don't want anything else to happen. And so right, we're going to see some sequence that looks like hn uh, the n plus i over two homology of the ordered configuration space of n points on M. And our maps are now going to be these iota prime star, I guess I should do that, uh, into the, or, to the n plus i plus two over two homology of the n plus two configuration space on M. And right, still, we're going to have the symmetric group act. But right, now we're over here, we're having the symmetric group act where, where this is a symmetric group on n, and this is the symmetric group on the set of n plus two elements. So something's a little bit right more crazy. And right, we're only either considering the even symmetric groups or the odd symmetric groups. Because right, we're increasing the number of points by two, and so our group should be slightly different here. Uh, that said, right, I'm kind of lying to you. This isn't quite the correct chain we need to think about, uh, but it's going to be something where the elements of the chain really can be thought as subsets of these things. So, right, what are our interesting things? Well, we need to introduce a category. Uh, and namely, that category is what we're going to call FIM plus, but that needs a few prerequisites before we even say anything about that. And so, right, we want to say things about the sequence, and we're going to use this category FIM plus or rather FIM plus mod uh, to say things. So we need first the idea of a perfect matching. So a perfect matching on some set is a pairing off of all the elements of the set such that each element is only in one pair, right? Sort of like we're having some antiquated notion where uh, everyone loves only one person and your love is returned, but also everyone's love. So that's kind of nice. So right, when we're dealing with finite sets, we need to make sure the set has an even cardinality. Uh, and that's good. Uh, and right, we go from there saying, well, let's define a category using this notion. So let FIM plus, FIM, sorry, just FIM, denote the category whose objects are finite sets and whose morphisms are injective maps uh, from A to B with an ordered perfect matching on the complement of the image of A and B. So, right. 
we have some injection from A to B, uh, and then everything else gets paired off. And right, there are a lot of different ways to do this pairing off. Uh, and right, in fact, there are probably a few too many. Uh, but what's nice is we can also consider some skeleton category where we only consider sets uh, the objects one through n. And right, this category, it's the full subcategory and it makes our lives a little bit easier. So it kind of, it's nice. Uh, and again, because perfect matchings only exist on finite sets of even cardinality, morphisms in this category are only going to exist between sets of the same parity. Uh, so right, as I said, we didn't quite want FIM. We wanted some category called FIM plus. And FIM plus, I'm not going to define it, but it's some category enriched over R mod. And it's going to allow us to consider some things that have to do with the sign qualities of multiplying homology classes that you would have to worry about, well, if you're taking one product where one, one pair is first and the second pair, and what happens when you switch those things around? You don't really want to have to worry about the signs too much. Everything will be dealt nicely with by we're adding this enriched category. Uh, and this just kind of deals with some symmetric group action. Uh, and right, well, what's the category we're finally actually going to think about that will allow us to define second order representation stability? And that's FIM plus module. So an FIM plus module over some ring R, and these things we're just going to call W, uh, is a functor from FIM plus to the category of R modules. Uh, and what's super nice about this category FIM plus module is that it's equivalent to some category of modules over a certain skew twisted commutative algebra that's Noetherian. And this Noetherianness of that skew commutative twisted algebra is going to allow for better statements of finite generation results, because Noetherian is nice, but algebra kind of scares me, so I don't really want to talk about it too much. And right, one thing to note, if W is some FIM plus module, uh, then right, the maps between W sub N and W sub M, so where we're considering sets of size uh, N, uh, to sets of size M, right? These maps are only going to exist if N and N are, say, the sets one, zero, 1 through N and 1 through M. Those maps are only going to exist if N and M have the same cardinality. And that's something nice and something that's kind of brought up in uh, these categories here. So, right, what is our FIM plus module that we're going to consider here? Well, it's this thing. And let's not to get too worried about the formal definition right now, because I'm not really even going to give it. But right, it's going to be this thing called W superscript M subscript I of N. And this is going to be the zeroth FI homology of the I plus N homology over two homology of the ordered configuration space of N points on M with over some ring K. But right, what really are these things? So for a given N, uh, these are going to be the new classes in homology. The classes that don't come from iota. So note, this is yours iota, not iota prime, uh, or rather iota star, and the symmetric group action. So let's think about this for a second. So if we're going to consider, say, an element in here of h of 2 of the ordered configuration space of four points on R2. And let's just say we're wanting to say, well, what are the things in here? So in order to do this, let's just look at what the general elements are going to look like. Here, right, there are two different types of classes. There's a class where one point sits here, another point goes around it, a third point goes around it, and the fourth point just sits here, and some permutation of these things. And the class where, well, one point sits here, uh, the second point goes around it, a third point sits over here, and the fourth point goes around it. So these are going to be the two different types of homology classes in the second homology of the ordered configuration space of four points on R2. But when we take this thing called zero with FI homology uh, to this thing, that's going to kill off this. Because, right, this thing right here really lives in the image of uh, iota prime, iota star, right? 
this lives in this image, because really this was some class that originally lived in the ordered configuration space of two points on, on the second homology of the ordered configuration space of three points on R2. So this originally lived in here, so we don't want to consider it. Instead, right, we only want to consider the classes where all of the endpoints here are actually doing something to create the I plus N over tooth homology. We want something where all the points are either dancing around each other or dancing around our uh, manifold and actually interacting with the topology. We can't just be wiggling side to side. We've got to dance all over the ball for ballroom and either do that or you dance with a partner. You're supposed to have fun at this party. And right, we're only going to consider things that are fun. So right, that's what's supposed to be our FIM plus module. And so right, this is going to live inside of that sequence we were talking about earlier. Right, this is going to be interesting, but they're actually really interesting things, not just things that come from an old one and somebody sends around, but right, new things. So now we have our FIM plus module, and we're now able to say something about second order representation stability. And so, right, what is second order representation stability? Uh, so this is a theorem of Miller and Wilson. If K is some field of characteristic zero, and M is a connected non-compact manifold of finite type and dimension at least two, then for all I at least zero, uh, the zero FI homology of the order of the N plus I over two homology of the order configuration space of N points on M is some finitely generated FIM plus module. And right, there's a lot to unpack here. So let's kind of do this, um, right? What are we trying to say? Uh, okay, so we don't, this thing doesn't actually tell us when things are gonna be generated or if we're gonna have some free FIM plus module, but we are gonna be able to say the new interesting elements, right? This sequence, right? Even the new interesting elements kind of have a pattern after some time. After a while, right? Uh, when we add two points and add go of homology, uh, homological degree by one, well, the new interesting elements in that set are gonna be the things from the old map plus a pair dancing around. So, right, for example, if we go from uh, H1 of the uh, order configuration space of two points on R2, right, to this thing, the, order, uh, the second homology of the ordered configuration space of four points on R2 and consider these interesting things, uh, well, they kind of have a nice behavioral pattern. Namely, even in here, the only interesting thing is one point with a second going around it. And the only interesting things uh, in the second space are, or rather the only new things in the second space are one with two going around it. And now four is gonna go around three. So, all we're saying is when this sequence, when we start adding two more points and considering one higher homology, the new homology classes that don't come from iota star uh, are just going to look like the old homology classes plus a dancing pair. So after a while, right, everything is just adding more dancing pairs. Uh, but again, right, you're not guaranteed that you don't some add some linear relations between these things by adding dancing pairs but you're also not guaranteed that it's not completely free. So interesting things can go on, but right, uh, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but prior to this, right, the only things that we kind of had seen are kind of the top homology classes or, uh, or some completely free action. So, right, what's going on? So right, just to summarize, we've got first and second order representation stability. This first order representation stability is once you start adding new points, uh, all the homology classes in the same degree are gonna start looking like the old things with points just sitting there doing nothing. This second order representation stability, so uh, the diagonal arrows says the new points we're gonna consider 
when we start adding two points and going up by homology degree by one, after a while, the only things that happen are adding pairs of points where one circles the other. So, right, we're going to see that, say, in and five is going to go round around it. And this is the FIM plus module morphism that we'd expect. And in fact, in this case, it's everything we'd want. So that would say be something over here, where right, if this is four, and this is three, and this is two, right, this is starting some uh, FIM plus module right here. That's this thing right here. Whereas the stability comes when we start consider the first order stability comes when we now have four points, and we now have this class as well. So we're seeing this is some stability on the unstable range of first order representation stability. Secondary stability considers the generators, the interesting new things, and says, when does adding a point, uh, two points where one circles the other, create something new, and also create everything we want. So that's uh, second order representation stability kind of in a nutshell. So, right, one more example of this. Uh, second order representation stability. Uh, this is due to Arnold or Cohen or some somebody who's old and better at topology than I'll ever be, right? Uh, basically a description of all of the homology classes in R2. And this is just saying that there's a nice little description and this is there's a nice description of the classes that kind of look like H, N, F2N of R2. All of this is saying is say, if we do this with Q coefficients, they're just going to look like things where everyone is dancing with their friend. That's this. Uh, and this has a very nice description as a bunch of representations uh, of S2N. Uh, there's a nice way of describing the Young diagrams. But right in the end, it's saying everything is going to look like this no relations between various generators of this form are going to exist. And so this is something that's free. And so, as I've kind of said before, the only things that we'd seen before uh, were things that were free like this, or things where once you start adding these orbiting pairs, everything dies after a while. And we don't even have new interesting homology groups when we start adding these two points orbiting and increase the homology degree by one, just suddenly all homology vanishes. And right, so the question is, well, right, are there some things where adding two points still gives us these new homology classes, but right, these some new homology classes actually are not zero. And that's what we want to consider. So, right, the answer to that, fortunately, is yes. And that comes in the form of the ones punctured torus. So right, the ones punctured torus is non-compact. So we have these first and second order representation stability results on its ordered configuration space. Uh, and right, what I'm claiming here is as an FIM plus module, it's not free and it's not eventually zero. The, the homology, the sequence in homology and uh, points on the order configuration we're gonna consider, uh, this isn't eventually zero. New things happen, but right, when you add these pairs of circling points, you somehow get linear relations between certain homology classes that you might not expect otherwise. So right, theorem. So if T naught is the one's puncture torus, then this sequence in homology, or rather this sequence in these new generators in homology, is going to be finitely generated as an FIM plus module on four points. So we're going to need at most four points in the order of configuration space to do this. And we're going to only going to have to consider the third homology. But it's pre FIM plus module, nor is it stably zero. So adding two points gives relations, but these relations don't kill off everything. And right, because we're finitely generating degree four, so big N, that just means uh, bigger than four here. This is the only new way of considering new points. And so, right, once we have this third homology of the ordered configuration space on four points on the once punctured torus, uh, 
all of the new homology classes say in the fourth homology. So the new homology classes in the fourth homology on six points. Well, they just look like things in here plus an orbiting pair. And same thing with the new classes in the fifth homology on eight points and so on and so forth. So we have some nice description of what the things are going to be. But it turns out also, again, that this is not free. Adding enough of these circling points somehow generates relations on the generator, these new classes. Uh, but right, it doesn't kill off everything in the grand scheme of things. So right, those are, these are these two points here. So how does this proof actually get done? So first things first, uh, you need to show what, how the Betty numbers of the ordered configuration space on N of N points on the once punctured gro torus grow as N increases. So we need to see how uh, the kth Betty number is a function of N. And it's gonna turn out when K is at least three, this is gonna be a very nice thing that's polynomial in N of the order two K minus two. And I'll say a little bit about more than that in a second. Uh, and this, this is going to be super useful for both showing non-freeness and non-zeroness. Uh, then we're going to use something called the arc resolution spectral sequence to bound generating degree. And this turns out, this arc resolution spectral sequence, it's a first quadrant plus minus first column spectral sequence. And it turns out the map from the neg the map on the E2 page from the uh, first column to the negative first column, that's exactly this FIM plus module morphism that we'd expect by going up two points. And finally, in the end, you count, dimension, you count dimensions uh, and you know how an FI, a free FIM plus module is supposed to look to show that this is not free. Okay, so, right, let's just say a little bit more about the Betty numbers of the ordered configuration space of the ones punctured torus. So it's a theorem of Pagara that was proved about a year or two ago that for k bigger than three, the kth Betty number of the ordered configuration space of the torus is going to be some polynomial in n of order 2k minus 2. And right, how did he do this? Uh, he used the Totaro spectral sequence and some result by Chris, Igor Chris, to do this. And the zeros, first, second, and third, uh, zero, first, and second Betty numbers are polynomials in n of order 0, 1, and 3. Uh, I should also add that he did some calculations uh, for k less than five. So, right, some calculations done for the zero, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth Betty numbers, where he has explicit formulas for uh, how these Betty, Betty numbers grow as n increases. And this was a nice little thing. And so, right, what is the good of this for us? Well, let's note something. The ordered configuration space on endpoints on the torus decomposes as the torus times the ordered configuration space of n minus one points on the once punctured torus. And this is because we can think of the torus as some nice additive group. So we can just consider the puncture of the origin, throw everything, move everything by that puncture to the origin if we're going to think of the torus as a square. And now we have some nice ordered configuration space on one less point on the ordered configuration space uh, on the once punctured torus. So uh, with a little bit of thinking, uh, you see that the same result is going to hold for the ordered configuration space of the once punctured torus. And so I have taught Michigan's math calculus sequence now for four years in a row. And for once, something actually came useful for me when I used a Taylor series to like this argument. And super great. I actually used something in teaching. Uh, so right, the corollary of this is that the Betty numbers of the ordered configuration space on endpoints on the once punctured torus are going to be of the exact same form. Namely, they're going to be some polynomial uh, in n of order 2k minus 2. And this is for k at least 3. And similarly, we have some formulas so that we know the growth rate of the smaller Betty numbers. And just as I said earlier, uh, you can use formulas Pagaria got for the 0 through 5th Betty numbers of the ordered configuration space of the torus to get formulas for the zero through fifth numbers of the ordered configuration space of the once punctured torus. So we have nice formulas. 
And those formulas were actually what, allow, what allows you to show non-freeness because you can do exact calculations of what the Betty numbers should be. So, right, why is this important? So for BK, when K is large, we have 2K minus 2 plus 2 over 2 equals K. And if we go back a bit uh, and consider our original th our theorem here, uh, right, if we think of n equals 2k minus 2, uh, then this thing all of a sudden becomes 2k minus 2 plus 2 over 2 equals k. And this allows us to say, OK, we're actually getting new homology classes in the order of configuration space of 2k minus 2k points, new, new k homology classes when we have now 2k minus 2 points on the order, in the order of configuration space of the ones punctured torus. So this is saying we're actually going to have a non-zero sequence. The sequence, because we now know the growth of the Betty numbers, as given by this little corollary here, we're able to say, OK, we've got something that is non-zero. Uh, non and as I said earlier, right, by knowing the exact growth rate of the small Betty numbers, uh, you're able to say, OK, this is going to be non-free as well. So I'm just going to say a few final words. I might end a little bit early about right, the generation result. So what is this arc resolution spectral sequence? So if the alum of Miller and Wilson, uh, if M is some non-compact connected smooth manifold of dimension two, so something like the one punctured torus, there is some spectral sequence called the arc resolution spectral sequence. And there's a very nice description of the E2 page, as you can see here. Uh, just note, uh, script TP is some abelian group. Uh, looks kind of nice, but more importantly, right, this is how the second page is going to look. And as I'm claiming, uh, right, the maps say if this here was six and making this thing four here, this is actually going to be our nice little map, uh, say our FIM plus module map that shows everything new in the ordered configuration space of four points, uh, the, the, the fifth homology of the order, the fourth homology of the ordered configuration space of six points on the torus. This actually is really coming from the new points of the ordered configuration space of, uh, the, the third homology of the ordered configuration space of four points on the ones punctured torus. So basically, all of these modules, all of these maps from the first column to the negative first column, uh, they're going to be the things that are really FIM plus modules. And so uh, some final things about the spectral sequence that we're kind of free to gloss over because they're hard and long and right, they're just a little bit of the details. So right, again, uh, the differential on the second page from the first column to the negative first column uh, is this FIM plus module morphism. Uh, there's some nice map that allows you to combine this arc ring special, special arc resolution spectral sequence on M uh, with the arc resolution spectral sequence on RD, where D is the dimension of M. And this allows you to kind of add points together and think of this kind of as some map that's kind of like uh, the generalized IOTA maps uh, coming from E. Uh, these maps are uh, going to obey some nice Leibniz rule, and this will allow us to have some nice description of what happens in, with these differentials. And more importantly, uh, there's some set L sub R and T sub R that looks like a bullseye. So it's going to kind of correspond to something, say, in 3, L sub 3, our classes are going to, this looks like this. So this is in L sub 3. Uh, and it turns out this thing is going to be zero in the torus, uh, the ordered configuration, the homologies of the ordered configuration space of the torus. It's nice, it dies, and this allows us to do all the work with our spectral sequence calculations. So that said, I guess I'm going to end a minute or a couple minutes early, but thank you for having me, and that's my talk. Thank you so much. Are there any questions?
I have a question. So, so you proved that this F I M plus modules are finitely generated, namely in degree at most four. Yeah. And uh, if if I am right, this implies also that they are finitely presented as F I M plus modules. Uh, Is it? And because they're Noetherian. Yeah. Because exactly because because of the Noetherianity property. So so, my question is: In which degree are they presented? So if I, you if you investigated this, or can you say something about this? Uh, most likely, uh, I feel like Jeremy probably would have a slightly better answer in terms of how to do this presentation argument. But yeah, you're probably yes, you're you're right about this. So uh, I'm not so certain at the moment is my best answer. Yeah, I mean, m m maybe you can read it off from the um, like, like so. You know, there's this the the um, the E two page of the spectral sequence has you know I mean the, the ER page of any spectral sequence is chain complexes, but the, the E two page of um, this spectral sequence is uh, is something that like roughly computes the syzygies uh, of these FIM modules. Like, like the E3 page is like stuff, it, the E3 page isn't the syzygies of these FIM plus modules, but it is up to like some garbage having to do with like homology of injective words. So um, like if you were to figure out where the, like when the first column of the spectral sequence vanished, um, that would presumably tell you um, when things are presented and, you know, probably for this particular group, I mean, Probably Nick even knows when the first column, when the relevant spot in the first column vanishes. <laughs> um, I mean, maybe not like off the top of his head, but like probably one could calculate that. Yeah. Um, so, the, so this method, you think this method can be enlarged to to also get some result about presentation degree? That would be my guess, but I I don't. Okay. No, I mean, like, so you notice there's zeros in the zeroth column. That has to do with the fact that the FI modules are free. Right. Be because they are FI hashtag, well. Yeah, yeah, sharp or whatever, you know. Sharp. It depends if you, you like music or, or the internet or, you know. No, I, I prefer music, right, FI sharp. OK, thanks. Can, can I ask a very simple question that you said something in the beginning uh, that if you just have one point rotating around the other on the one punctured torus, that that is actually a, a zero homology class? Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain that? Uh, okay, so yeah, do I have option to draw on the space? Uh, basically, uh, so one quick argument to do this without actually even uh, thinking about this too hard is these this Betty number calculation. Uh, it turns out the first Betty number is going to be something that looks just like two n, and it turns out all that means is you either have all of the loops uh, going around either the meridian or the longitude circle. Uh, but you can also do this by showing that uh, this thing uh, with one here and two here in the ones punctured torus, that's also the boundary of some manifold, uh, some two manifold, where if you think of this as being your two manifold, it's given by things uh, where here's the puncture where one and two are going this way, and you have to avoid some box here. And so it's some open manifold in uh, some open two manifold in the ordered configuration space of two points. So it's the boundary of some yeah, manifold, some two manifold in the ordered configuration to two points on uh, T2.
uh, Andre Doris. And, and then you, you said, um, so, but then um, having two of them, that would not be zero or do you not know? Uh, so that, that, that would be just because of uh, this higher growth number here. So once you've gone now right uh, to uh, H2 of F4 of T0, right? This second Betty number here is a polynomial in order three. So that basically just means uh, the, only, the last new thing comes in uh, this space, uh, the, the second homology group of the ordered configuration space of three points in the torus. So presumably then this thing here is dead, though that would be a slightly harder calculation to see by looking at it as some boundary of some three manifold. Thanks. Are there any other questions or comments? I, I also have another question. So you use Pagaria's result, which if I remember correctly, are rational in nature. Yeah. So, and, and I guess this is the only reason why also you say it, I work on a field of characteristic zero at the beginning. Yeah. So do you have any idea what would happen if you if you just work over of a Z or I mean over another field? I actually, I think the field of characteristic zero, but Jeremy can correct me if I'm wrong, is a result, is something uh, in his paper uh, with Jen, Jen A. Where, I, don't think, I don't think your paper, your paper like philosophically quotes our paper, but you don't, um, other than like the, the so, so we use characteristic zero for no theory entity. That's the only place where we use it. And you don't use no theory entity, presumably. Yeah, I don't think so. So, yeah, so I don't know. It wouldn't be relevant there. Yeah. Then you just told me not to worry too much about the field and make it as nice as I want it to be, so. Okay, if there are no more questions, let's thank Nicholas again. <laughs>